Raiding is the ultimate end game experience in World of Warcraft. Join an overwhelmingly massive force of heroes as you make your way through bigger and more dangerous enemies than you've ever encountered. Yet as terrifying as that might seem, raiding is one of the most enjoyable and rewarding experiences the game has to offer. My name is Swag, your guide to the world of Warcraft, and today I'm here to help you get into your first ever raiding experience. Of course, if you're new here, take a second to hit that subscribe button so you may stay up to date on all wow news and guides before we go any further it's probably a good idea to discuss what even is a raid and what makes it so different than the dungeons that we've been doing up to this point it comes down to two crucial differences in size and pacing raids are physically larger they have larger groups of players and they even have bigger fights they are also designed in opposition to the pacing of mythic plus dungeons mythic plus is all about efficiency and quick completion you want to enter in already knowing how to complete that dungeon whereas raids have a naturally slower pace to them and focus more on the players learning together how to overcome challenges expect to die a lot and also learn a lot from those deaths as mentioned raid groups are larger than dungeon groups they can range in size from 10 to 30 players, and this is flexible. That means if you have 16 players, for example, the raid will scale to match the number of players you have. Every raid team will have two tanks. Their role is to pass aggro back and forth to make sure one tank does not take too much damage and die. While there are only two tanks, your number of DPS and healers can be flexible to whatever you want it to be. DPS are focused on dealing as much damage as they possibly can while still handling the mechanics that the boss is dishing out. Of course, healers are there to keep everybody alive, and I would suggest to try and have at least one healer per three to four DPS that you have in the group. Organized raid teams will also have a raid leader. This is a player that is designated as the leader of your team. They will coach you on mechanics beforehand, walk you guys through the fights, they will even make callouts during the fights, and review the fights afterwards to let you know what can be improved upon in the future. Every raid has four difficulty settings that can be turned on for that raid. The higher the difficulty, the better the loot. The difficulties are LFR, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic. Unlike Mythic Dungeons, where the difficulty scales by bosses just doing more damage and having more health, in raiding, as the difficulty scales, not only do they do more damage and have more health, but they will also have new mechanics added to the fight. So every difficulty level you go up, you will need to learn some new mechanics. LFR, which stands for Looking for Raid, is unique as it's the only difficulty level that will automatically sort you into a raid when you queue up. Normal and Heroic difficulties are very similar to each other. Heroic is a bit more difficult than Normal and, of course, offers better rewards as such. And Mythic is the highest level of difficulty that you can play in raiding and is also considered one of the highest levels of difficulty for any content in the game. You're also only able to loot each boss once per week per character, per difficulty. That sounds a little bit complicated, so let me explain it. Let's say you kill the first three bosses on normal difficulty of raid. If you try to go back into normal difficulty with another group or with some friends and you kill those first three bosses again, you will not get any loot. Now your friends can still get loot, but you will not be able to. However, if you killed those first three bosses and then went into heroic difficulty from normal and you went to go kill those first three bosses again, because you only looted them on normal, you can still loot those first three on heroic. As you begin learning how to raid, you'll encounter a few terms that are important to know. You've heard me mention mechanic a few times now, so let me explain what that means. A mechanic is any move that an enemy uses, which you as a player need to respond to or react to in some sort of way. It's kind of vague, so to use it in an example, this boss has a mechanic that will kill anybody in front of it when he does a certain attack. If you want to be more specific, that type of mechanic can be called a frontal. A frontal is any ability that hits right in front of the boss. Swirlies is a term that refers to swirls that appear on the ground during combat. Now, a swirly will not hurt you, but rather indicate that incoming damage will occur on that spot. So if you are standing in a swirly, you will want to get out of it quickly, or else if you hang out there too long trying to cast that last spell before you move, you could find yourself lying face down on the ground. Puddles are another mechanic that are indicated by marks on the ground. Usually something like lava or shadow or whatever kind of looks dangerous, 
underneath your feet that you might want to move out of. Unlike a swirly, these are damage that is happening right now. So the longer you stand in a puddle, the more damage you're going to take. Circles are a mechanic that are represented by circles around the player. They're very interesting as they can indicate a lot of different things and you need to understand that fight in order to know how to react to the circle. Most commonly, when you get a circle around you, you do want to spread out away from other players. Similar to a circle, you also have what are called soaks. They are represented by a circle again. However, this time it's filled in. You can kind of see an energy inside the circle. If you see a soak occur, run into the soak space and take that damage. Although sometimes you need to rotate which players are taking the soaks and which aren't. Lastly, tank swaps are mechanics that cause stacking damage to the tank. As the stacks increase from each hit, it becomes less and less likely that the tank can survive another hit. When this occurs, the other tank must taunt off the boss so that way they start taking damage and the previous tank can let those stacks expire. Raids are super exciting and I bet you're feeling ready to jump into one and get started right now. But hold up. One of the most important things to remember with raiding is to respect your teammates' time. Think of your raid team like a sports team. Remember, you've got anywhere from 9 to 29 other players in your group. The worst thing you can do is show up to raid without regard for the people you'll be spending the next few hours with. They've worked hard to be here. It's no longer about just yourself. The whole team matters. So take a minute and make sure your gear is enchanted. You don't need the best enchants, but at least something. Put gems into any open sockets your armor might have. Make sure you're stocked on consumables like runes, food, and files, which used to be called flasks and many people still call them as such. All of the things mentioned above for prep can be bought easily on the auction house. It's also important to make sure your gear is ready for the difficulty you want to do. There's no hard rule, but you don't want your gear's eye level to be significantly behind what the raid is dropping for loot. Obviously, you want it to still be an upgrade as you're getting the gear from the bosses, but you don't want to be too far behind. It is also super important to take a moment and learn the fights before you arrive. There are some great one to two minute videos out there on YouTube that I personally love when it comes to learning boss mechanics so that I show up prepared. However, a lot of other players like to read up on the fights or they'll even go into LFR to try and learn the mechanics. And lastly, when it comes to prepping for raid, you'll want to install an add-on like deadly boss mods or big wigs. These add-ons call out boss mechanics and even give you alerts when you need to take action during the fight. All right, I think you finally got everything you need to know to finally get into a raid, but how do we actually do that? Earlier, I mentioned that raiding is like a sports team, and I think that analogy holds true here more than ever before. As you progress in difficulty, think of it as progressing through different leagues, each having stricter and stricter expectations. LFR is like your pickup game. You just show up to see who's playing. You can open up the group finder tool, select raid finder on the left and choose which section of the raid you'd like to do. LFR breaks raids up into sections instead of the entire raid. Once a team is found for you, you'll automatically appear wherever you need to be. Normal and heroic raids are more like casual leagues. They will require you to put together a team manually and then show up at the entrance of the raid. Raids do have summoning stones at their entrances. If you have two players arrive, they can start summoning the rest of the team, but you do need to physically be there in order to start the raid. However, to find a normal or heroic team is the trickier part. There are two main strategies for finding a group. The first is to open up your group finder, select pre-made groups on the left, choose raids, current expansion, find a group and start signing up for the groups doing the difficulty of raid you want. If you want a safer environment for learning, look for ones that say things like fun run or guild run. Those groups will often be more patient, especially with the guild runs. In fact, the second strategy I suggest is actually to just find a guild that has a weekly raid schedule. And there's something really nice about knowing you have the same dedicated groups of players getting together week after week after week, learning how to do these fights together and building some really cool friendships in the process. I've already put out a beginner's guide on how to find a guild, so if you need more information on that, you can check out that video and we won't dwell on it any further here. Guilds that raid Mythic, however, will be much more serious as this is the toughest level of gameplay. Some guilds will even have players try out or compete for positions on the team. Think of Mythics like the major leagues. They are trying out players to find the best of the best so that they can hopefully get to the end. And that's everything that you need to know before you get into your first raid. At this point, just get in there and start killing bosses and let me know what kind of loot you find. My name is Swag and it is wonderful being your guide to the world of Warcraft.